When we talk about large language models, it seems like everyone agrees that they're an impressive feat of technology. People say things like, AI will revolutionize every industry, or it's getting so smart, no one will need to work again. We've even heard people throw around terms like general intelligence or AI singularity. But I am not sold, and over the past few months, I think people have been catching on that artificial intelligence is just Silicon Valley's favorite new buzzword, and it no longer represents the incredible leap in progress that the phrase seems to imply. You might have watched this TED Talk by Yejin Choi, where she describes some fundamental problems with AI and why even highly advanced models seem to fail at basic, common sense tasks. Or you might have seen Adam Conover's deep dive, AI is BS a fantastic video where he talks about both the misuse and misrepresentation of AI in media and by multinational conglomerates. While I agree with the points made in both videos, I'm also an optimist. I think GPT-4 is the biggest leap in technology since the internet itself. And also, I believe its full potential up to this point remains untapped. Think about it. GPT-4 is a massive model that has been encoded with the collective knowledge of all of humanity. When you understand prompt engineering, GPT-4's mastery over language lets both the input and the output of the model be nuanced, reliable, and useful. Despite its shortcomings, its strength can be used much more creatively than as a chatbot or a virtual assistant or res resume generator. With that in mind, it surprises me that even though I have been incredibly confident that GPT-4 will change the world since the day it came out, it seems like every new AI integration runs headlong into problems with accuracy, with damaging misuse, or with deceptive practices. My role on YouTube is as a science communicator and a prompt engineering teacher. So I think the fact that the world is still pointing to ChatGPT as the best representation of AI is doing a disservice to the capabilities of the model. I feel off about it, because I think the world could do much better. So I set out to make it. And for the past six months, I worked with my mom, who happens to be an incredible developer. She went to MIT, then to Yale for grad school, and now she's helping me with this. I worked with her to create a showcase of GPT-4's ability that is easy to understand, easy to interact with, and avoids all the pitfalls that makes ChatGPT and all those spin-off apps feel like a toy. Here was my idea. I realized every single generation from GPT-4 falls into one of two categories. Either it's true information, stuff the model picked up on during its training, or it's creative writing. So essentially, guesswork. What I wanted to do was build a website that systematically prompted GPT-4 into explaining everything it knows about a single topic without going as far as incentivizing the model to make up facts. This way, if I was right, we could build a transparent and accessible database of knowledge that could be rigorously evaluated. The website could be built into a slick app that organized all that knowledge into courses and let you track your progress as you learned. This way, no matter your skill in prompt engineering, just by visiting my website, you could experience the highest quality generations from OpenAI's greatest model. This was a cool idea, but of course, I was relying on a really big if. You see, the idea that I could write a generic prompt engineering framework that could start from a basic topic and incrementally query GPT-4 until it explained everything it knew was just a theory. And because no one had done it before, I had no idea if it would even work. Luckily, as you guys have probably seen, I have a bit of a knack for this stuff. What I essentially did was create a flowchart describing how I understand the general concept of knowledge to be organized. The idea actually looks a bit like a pyramid. At the very top, you have the main topic. Could be space, or history, or parenting, or philosophy, gardening, whatever. Any topic would have a certain amount of knowledge associated with it. Knowledge that, hopefully, the large language model learned during its training. Then there is probably stuff outside the model's domain. It's at this point in my prompt where I needed to ask the AI a very subtle question. And it's along the lines of this. What are the key subtopics that lead to a complete understanding of blank? Of course, this is a simplification. The actual prompt to figure this out would also need to do work to make sure each subtopic is relatively balanced in scope. 
By that, I mean making sure that each one has approximately the same amount of stuff to learn. I would also need to add some clever phrasing to ensure the model doesn't take you into unrelated topics, or worse, invent topics that don't even exist. Once that was done, and I'll be honest, I think I did it very well, I could use another, very similar prompt to go a whole layer deeper and have it tell me all the subtopics of the subtopics. This time, I would need to do work to make sure there was no overlap from one subtopic to another, but then, with some clever prompt engineering, I got three layers that described all the categories of learning for any given topic. Call the top layer here a course, call the middle layer chapters, and the bottom layer lessons, and voila! You have yourself a clear map to everything the model knows about a generic topic. Plug in whatever you want to learn about, and this model shows you a detailed list of what the model can teach you. This was an awesome start, but each of these lessons actually needs information in them. Otherwise, we aren't really learning anything about the model's latent space. So, what's next? What we had to do was fill every single one of these lessons with a complete list of the actual knowledge the model has. I call this the research phase. What I get to do is plug the topic, chapter name, and lesson name back into a new, fresh prompt. This is what I find so cool. I get to use everything we just uncovered and ask the model a clever list of questions and then use the answers to ask more questions and again and again until I have confidence that the knowledge within the lesson is enough to teach it in a compelling way. Of course, this is the sort of thing that would be a mess, nearly impossible to do with ChatGPT. But GPT-4 has an API, and prompt engineering is not just a person sitting down at their keyboard writing a prompt. The questions I ask during the research phase are generic, <laughs> and a version of them can be asked in regard to every single lesson for every single chapter for any course you can imagine. The point is, prompt engineering is something you can do upstream, more like a middleware or a programming layer, rather than using it as the actual interface for your software. If there is one thing about large language models that I thought would change the world, it was this. When developing software, no longer do you need to describe the output you're after using a programming language. Now, you can do it with the complexity and nuance of your native tongue. But I couldn't stop there with just my big list of facts. I realized something. Once I put the prompts together for the <laughs> research phase, I, <laughs> that's dumb, whatever. <laughs> Once I'd done that and was looking at what it gave me back, I realized this could be more than just a demo of GPT-4's capability. I had just created a framework that could outline every true fact GPT-4 learned after training with somewhere on the order of a trillion words. This wasn't some gimmick. This was an incredibly useful tool. And for the world to benefit from it, I could take advantage of ChatGPT's other strength. Remember, large language models are either generating true information or they're doing what I called creative writing. This model, when it's writing a script or a story or a poem, is liable to just make stuff up. Everyone on my channel who has tried ChatGPT knows it. But if you give it everything it needs so that it can do all that writing without making anything up, it's going to do an excellent job at sentence structure, tone, and the flow of the writing. We can then take all these facts we collected, plug them back into a new prompt. A prompt that asks the model to turn them into a proper lesson that explains the topic in detail as if you're trying to learn it in the context of a course. What is truly amazing is this time, the lesson isn't coming out of a black box anymore. Instead, it's being written based on a list of facts that you can browse, fact check, and if needed, go back and fix. With a plan, some clever engineering, and a lot of patience, I did it. I now have a website that can create compelling educational material on every topic under the sun. I know I haven't posted a video in four months. I hope this was worth the wait. I'm calling my website Dodecalearn, and this is the first public announcement we have ever made about it. We being my mom and I, it's just us. But when you go to it, it feels super cool. It's slick and fun. It feels like a learning management system with a bunch of courses that you can explore. Each course has a list of chapters and, of course, a list of lessons, and inside those lessons is where the magic happens. This is where you can read GPT-4's consolidated explanation of everything you might want to know about whatever you want to learn. 
and this was so cool. Once I started reading this stuff, I realized there was so much here, and GPT-4 is so smart that I took the whole thing an entire layer deeper. So now, every lesson has a bonus list of questions that you might want to ask after reading it. These questions are far more than a query to ChatGPT. Instead, they each had their own research phase. So before generating the answer, the software queries GPT-4 for every fact it might need. These questions let you investigate the knowledge as deeply as you could possibly want to. As you might imagine, to pull this off and to have an ever-growing collection of courses and lessons, API costs are going to skyrocket. But I know you guys really appreciate that I don't put this stuff behind a paywall, so I want to give you the first chapter of every course I'm generating absolutely for free. And of course, with all of these bonus questions included. Just go to dodecalearn.com, plug in your Gmail, Discord, or Facebook, or whatever you like to log in with, and I would be thrilled to hear what you guys think of the result. Of course, not everything is going to be generated yet. It's set up to work for all of our courses in just one click, but if I let everyone do that for free, I promise I would go broke really quickly. So we're gonna need a premium plan too. Early access to it is gonna be invite only for now, but I promise I won't disappear for another four months. I took my hiatus, I made this, and I am back and raring to go on this YouTube stuff. Before I go, I do wanna point out that all these images on my homepage are AI generated. And if you wanna learn how I did that, I suggest you watch this video next. Alrighty, until next time. By the way, links in the doobly-doo.